Hey guys, I'm back with another monthly language recap because we're now in May and with April over, I wanted to go over some of the goals that I set for me and do a small recap of how April went for me. So April was a fairly big month for me. I had my final exams in the last week, which basically meant that I wasn't able to study languages as much as I thought I would. I was exhausted all the time and I didn't manage to finish a lot of my goals. But the problem was more that I set really high goals for myself, knowing very well that I had a lot to do that month. So it's basically my own fault that I didn't manage to complete the goals. But I'm also not really mad about it because I know the reason why and I know that it was actually quite unreasonable what I was aiming to do. So although I didn't manage to achieve my goals, I'm not really mad about the amount of language study I managed to do in April. Just as a quick update on the goals that I set for April, I set the first goal to finish the book that I was reading, which is called Insect. And I'm finally free from the shackles of this book. I've been reading it for so long. I think I started it at the very beginning of the year and I didn't even really like it in the end. And absolutely no one was forcing me to do this. Like I could have stopped at any moment, but I feel like the pressure to finish a book once I've started it and that pushed me to get all the way through this really, really big and in my opinion, quite boring book. I think my biggest problem with it was that it just felt way too long. Like I said it at the beginning when I unboxed the book and also in the updates that I gave when I was talking about reading it, that it's just a huge book. Like it's very thick and it's also just larger than all of the other books that I have. And it, when I was reading through it, by the time I finished, it just felt like the whole book could have been half the size and kept 100% of the story. Like I'm certain this isn't what happened, but it almost feels like they realised that the book was going to be very long, so they decided to just end it really quickly in like the next couple of pages. Because there's a large section of the book where I can't tell you a single thing that happened, but then right at the end, in like the last 10 pages, you get 5 million things happening at once, all of the action, all of the conflict, it's all just jammed right at the end, and it just ended up falling a bit flat. But anyway, I'm not here to do a book review, I'm not very good at it in any way. I will say that one good thing about this book was that I learned a lot of new words from it. There were at least like 10-15 words every chapter that I didn't know, which seems like a lot, but it didn't actually impact my ability to get through it. It was still quite good for my level. But moving on, my next goal was to read 20 news articles and I only managed to read 12 articles and most of them were in the last couple of days. And this was partially because I didn't have the time because I was studying, but also because there wasn't really any news that I felt like reading when I did go onto the news site. Because I go in through these cycles of liking to read the news and not liking to read the news. And I think during April because I was studying for exams and also reading another book. But now I'm back into my sort of news mood. I read a lot of news nowadays. My next goal was to watch four documentaries and write summaries on them. I only managed to do one and that's also because of not having a lot of time because I was watching the documentary which was about an hour long and then I was taking a couple of notes to help me write the summary. And then of course writing the summary itself took quite a while so it's a very time consuming activity and it's very tiring and at that and during april i didn't really have a lot of energy i also wanted to write two other sort of essays that were not summaries and i didn't manage to do that again because writing is something i'm not very good at and it's very time consuming i planned out one essay and i started it but i didn't get very far through it because I just couldn't find the motivation. Uh, my next goal was to journal daily and this was very easy. I've kept up my journal for quite a while now and I didn't miss any days. I wanted to do five dictations and that was very easy to do. I managed to get all five done. I found it quite fun and actually during April I really started to do a lot more B2 dictations which were a lot more of a challenge. It was a bit a big step up but after a couple of them, it actually gets quite easy to do. And again, this does depend on what the topic is, what the dictation is actually about. But in general, even at my worst, I still get about an average score, like a 10 out of 20. I also wanted to use my textbooks a bit more. So I did 
sort of managed to do this. There are still some textbooks that I didn't touch at all, but every once in a while, I managed to crack open, open a textbook and even do just one exercise. It's much easier to do because it takes a lot more energy and I can do it very quickly. Some days I would literally just open a textbook, answer one question and then close it again and that was completely fine. I'm glad I didn't set any goals there because I would have felt too pressured to do things. And now for Japanese, I had a goal to translate two songs. Now I made the silly mistake of not keeping track of how many songs I translated or transcribed. So even though my goal was only to do two each, I can't remember how many I did in April. It doesn't help that I'm making this video halfway through May, but I think that I transcribed two songs and translated one, but I really can't remember. During April, I was still a bit hesitant to do Japanese stuff because it required a lot more mental effort than French. I also wanted to write one journal entry in April and I didn't manage to do that. It's, this is partially because, again, writing is not my strong point and it was even more difficult in Japanese because I've forgotten a lot of kanji. So I didn't really feel like I wanted to. And then along with everything else, I got very busy and doing what, something once a month is makes it very easy for me to forget it. The only reason that I've able, been able to keep up my French journal is because I'm doing it every single day. So I know that every day I should just be checking my journal to see if I've written in it. And if I haven't, at the end of the day, I need to write something in it. Before, what I was doing for French was writing every week. I wanted to start a routine where I wrote twice a week and that just wasn't working out because I just keep forgetting because if I'm not doing something every day it's very very easy for me to just forget to do it and that's what happened with Japanese. I had my mind on so many other things that I ended up forgetting that I had to also write a journal entry in Japanese and it doesn't help that I've got my journal stacked away on a bookshelf and I only really take it down every, one, every month so it's easy to forget that it's there. I also wanted to get halfway through Hoshi no Oji-sama, which is the book that I'm reading right now. I did not manage that because I didn't even want to open it and try to read in Japanese. It would just seem like too much of a mental strain. But halfway through May, I can say that it's actually quite a good book and it's quite easy to read. So I'm definitely going to get through more of that now. And I wanted to do some exercises from the Tobida textbook which I did manage to do, but only very little because I still wasn't ready to add structure to my language learning. I just wanted to do whatever I wanted, which was mostly to do with music and the song translations and everything. The first week of May, I did the 40 hour, seven day language challenge and I made a couple of videos about it, which you can see on my channel. And through that challenge, I was able to get a lot of language learning done and it was probably the most productive week of language learning that I've ever had. I planned out my April goals at the beginning of the month, but I had to readjust a lot of them because of the 40 hour, seven day language challenge. Since I ended up achieving a lot of the goals that I set for myself, I was assuming that I wouldn't be able to get a lot done over the first week and I set goals that were similar to my April goals, but I was really quite productive over the challenge. so. I ended up having to step up a lot of the goals that I set. Now on to my May goals. My first goal was to finish the book Brûlée Vive, which was the next book on my list. And I actually ended up finishing it in the first week of the month because of the 40 hour, seven day language challenge. I definitely would have finished it in May anyways because it's quite a short book, but the challenge definitely sped up this process because I was reading for like an hour every day and I never do that usually. And now that I'm done, I've moved on to another book that I wanted to read, which is called Numéro 2. And I want to get halfway through this book. So that's 117 pages and I've already gone through 28. I think with a couple of hours of concentrated reading, I could definitely get it done. My next goal is to get 20 dictations done. And this is quite an ambitious one, especially considering that my goal for the entire quarter was 15 dictations. But I really enjoy doing them and they're quite easy and quick to do, so I figured I may as well push myself to get more done. I have already gotten eight done in the first week, so I'm well on track to getting them all done this month. And I'm now completely just doing the B2 ones. And I've also done some C1 dictations too. Though the C1 
dictations are quite difficult most of the time. Planning for me has really made me realise how glad I am that I plan quarterly and not yearly because a lot of things have changed and I'm definitely going to end up surpassing a lot of the goals that I set for the quarter because I was really underestimating myself and it's not a bad thing because it means that my goals are easy to reach so it's easy to get that motivation of just completing your goals but at the same time I really didn't know what I was capable of and the language challenge has definitely showed me that I can get a lot done if I want to. My next goal is to read 40 news articles and I struggled a bit with this last, last month because I didn't have much time but I definitely think I can get it done this month. I've already read 21 news articles over the first week so it should be easy to get the rest over the rest of the month. I also want to watch eight documentaries and again in the first week I already watched four and I just want to watch four over the next couple of weeks. I wrote four summaries from those four documentaries during the language challenge as well. The goal is to write four more to make eight summaries. My next goal is to write one non-summary essay. So this is just a basic argumentative essay that you'd have to write in the B2 exam. I set myself the goal of two last month and I couldn't do it. And during the 40 hour, seven day language challenge, I attempted to write another one, but I wasn't able to because I realized that I don't actually know what I'm doing. Writing summaries is quite easy because you're literally just copying what you saw. But when it comes to actually doing argumentative essays, I realize I'm really quite bad at it because it's been ages since I've had to do it, even in English. So I decided to just take some time and actually focus on how to do it properly because I can't just keep writing and writing and hoping that I get better without actually knowing the basis first. I don't want to rush it and I don't want to force myself to just write something for the sake of writing it. Like practice does make perfect, perfect, but it does help to have an idea of what you're doing. So I want to really focus on getting the bases down and getting every individual part down. Like I've already done a lot of practice on writing an intro and a conclusion and how to structure paragraphs and learning which words to use and all of that is help really helpful and then finally I'll build it up to actually answering a question and getting that through. It's still early days for the exam, I'm planning on taking it in December so it's not too serious right now, I don't need to get a lot of practice done right now, I just want to get the bases down and understand what I'm doing and of course I'm going to continue to journal daily which is easy to do and I want to use my textbooks and again I'm not setting any sort of goals or rules on which ones I'm going to use. Over the first week during the language challenge I was able to use almost every single one of them and it was very fun and very informative and I want to just go back to that sort of mindset of just using whatever I want whenever I want because I never know what I'm in the mood to learn and I need to get through all of them anyway. For Japanese I want to finish Hoshi no Ojisama. I've been reading this for way too long as well. It's not that long. It's not that long of a book, and it's not that difficult of a book. I can definitely finish it, and I've already gotten through half of it during the language challenge. I went to journal once, which I did in the first week, but I might journal again if I feel like it. I want to do more tobira exercises because my grammar in Japanese is starting to get worse because of a lack of use. Um, I want to translate eight songs and I've gotten three done already and these are mostly going to be from the new Yorishika album. So I'm glad to have some material that I really like to work through and I have the same goal of transcribing eight songs and I've done four already. So that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know how April went for you and what your May goals are. And I'll see you in the next video.